number 10 is Miley Cyrus. Most recently, fans are both worried and convinced that Miley Cyrus has allegedly joined a cult known as the Modern Mystery School. Concerned fans went to TikTok to explain the situation, saying the organization isn't what it seems. It's allegedly an organization that trains healing practitioners in the tradition of the lineage of King Solomon. These healers are encouraged to join sacrifices every year. They sign contracts stating they aren't allowed to tell anybody about it. Now the main proof for Miley is linked to the multiple times she was seen out with two women named Lily and Blue, who are allegedly healers in the organization. Along with that, Miley's lack of social media presence and outings have also been a point of worrisome behavior. Now nothing has been confirmed, but there is continuous speculation. Number 9. Bethany Joy Lenz One Tree Hills alum Bethany Joy Lenz is finally ready to speak out about her experience in a cult for 10 years. On an episode of the Drama Queen's podcast, she told her former co-stars that she would write about her time in the undisclosed cult. Also, I don't know how much I can say because there are still people and legal things in place that makes it more complicated for the timing of that, but I do write, I write all the time, she said. Now she added that she was a part of this cult the entire time she was on One Tree Hill. I got involved in something that seemed very rote. I grew up in a Christian home where Wednesday night Bible studies were very common. I think that there's a lot of people that can resonate with that, and I just went to another one. I moved to a new state, moved to a new city, and I went to another Wednesday night Bible study, and that's all it ever was to me. But the friendship seemed deeper, more vulnerable somehow as time went on. The person who was brought into the leadership position was sociopathic, and most of us who were involved were in our early 20s, she said. Number 8. Jaden and Willow Smith Siblings Jaden and Willow Smith have been linked to the Organite Society for multiple years now, a cult that claims they're a secret society of individuals who create and place organized night to balance Gaia's energies per their Instagram. Back in 2014, Willow shared a now archived photo of her, Jaden, and Kylie Jenner. Due to these posts, many people believe that they joined the Osho cult. Now, the organic crystal is closely linked to the cult, notorious for its beliefs about and executing one of the largest bioterrorist attacks in America that infected innocent people with salmonella. Number 7. Megan Marks Bachelor alum Megan Marks revealed in 2017 that she was brought up in a religious group, a band drinking and watching television, but she stands firm that it wasn't exactly a cult. She told Elle magazine, I don't like to call it a sect or cult, although many people would regard it as such. Its main purpose was to save individuals from hell, a perspective obviously I disagree with now. On the Kyle and Jackie O show in 2016, Megan explained that she prefers not to use the word cult and instead to describes it as a community, which would also just happen to perform exorcisms. In exorcisms, the preacher would put his hand on your head and speak in tongue to get the demons out, she told the radio host. Eventually, Megan made the difficult decision to leave the community and venture off into the real world. It was difficult to leave the community, but I had thought about it for a while. Having my first drink was hard, she told Kyle and Jackie O. Number 6. Joaquin Phoenix Joaquin Phoenix, along with his siblings River, Rain, Liberty, and Summer, were raised in Children of God, known as the Family International, where they believed in salvation, spiritual reformation, and the apocalypse of an antichrist. It is a group with an extensive history of making members give up their money and contact with the outside world. Joaquin lived this way for over a decade as his family traveled across South America as missionaries for the Children of God. But around 1974, things started to get a little fishy. The Children of God implemented a form of gospel preaching called flirty fishing, where female members of the cult or fisherwomen would persuade men or fish to join the community and contribute a charitable donation via intimacy. The practice was the primary source of financial income and a spike in membership as over tens of thousands of children would be born from these encounters. Now, due to these distorted practices, the family left the group. In a previous interview, Joaquin revealed his parents left soon after he was born, saying, I think my parents thought they found a community that shared their ideas. Cults rarely advertise themselves as such. It's usually someone saying, we're like-minded people, this is a community. But I think the moment my parents realized there was something more to it, they got out. Number 5. Val Kilmer Val Kilmer is a devout believer of Christian science. It follows many of the same major tenets of other parts of the Christian faith, but also emphasizes the power that prayer can have to aid in physical healing. Its founder, Mary Baker Eddy, said that the faith was designed as a return to primitive Christianity and its lost element of healing. Now, the religious group is prolific for their metaphysical practices, such as a connection to the divine mind and the idea that all problems could be cured with the right mindset. 
Yeah. Now in January 2015, Val was hospitalized with a possible tumor after denying that he had been diagnosed with cancer. In his memoir, Val also told the story of how he managed some of his worst health crises and the surprising role that Cher played in his treatment. He was staying at Cher's guest house as his health declined. One night, I suddenly awoke vomiting blood. That covered the bed like a scene out of The Godfather. I prayed immediately, then called 911, then alerted my hostess. Cher stepped in and stepped up, Val wrote. Now it wasn't until April 2017, after suffering needlessly for two years, that he stated he experienced healing from his cancer due to his affiliation with the cult. Number four, Kira Maguire. Bachelor alum Kira Maguire was also born into a cult, a polygamous cult called the Seaside. That was founded by her father. He was a New Zealand police officer before fleeing his home country and migrating to Australia in the 1970s. He changed his name, reinvented himself, and quickly started amassing a following after becoming a self styled messiah. But in August 2000, her father was found guilty of committing 21 related offenses. He was sentenced to seven years and six months in jail, but died towards the end of his sentence. Speaking about it, she said, I didn't know who my mom was until I was five. It sounds strange, but it just is what it is. I didn't even have birthdays, she said in 2016 after the story broke. I think I had my first birthday when I was seven. For other people, it might be really sad, but it's not because it's my story. Number three, Angel Hayes. The Detroit based rapper was raised in the Pentecostal Greater Apostolic Faith Commune. When Angel was young, their mother met, met a preacher in the Greater Apostolic Faith, and the two moved into his home with his wife and children in what Angel describes as a cult. Growing up in the church, they witnessed violence and manipulation at a very young age. Angel also recalled being told that they would die spontaneously if they did not behave correctly. In an interview with The Guardian, Angel said, We all lived in the same community within 10 minutes of each other. You weren't allowed to talk to anyone outside of that. You weren't allowed to wear jewelry, listen to music, to eat certain things, to date people. You weren't allowed to pretty much do anything. Church was on Sunday. Wednesdays, Wednesdays and Fridays. When they did revivals, it was every day. I used to just crawl under the bench and try to sleep. Now, fortunately, when Angel was 15, they escaped from the church's clutches after their mother fell out with its leaders and they moved to New York City. Number two, Toni Braxton. In her Unbreak My Heart memoir, the famous R&B singer revealed that she joined Pillar of Truth, a Pentecostal apostate group, with her family as a young girl. She said her family fell into religious extremism, where women and their neighbors had to be covered up in full and almost everything was considered evil, including going to the movies. Members of the Pillar or Truth congregation weren't allowed to listen to their music, including in public places like roller skating rinks, watch movies, celebrate holidays, and drink, as written by Tony. Disobeying any of the regulations meant going to hell. She described pretending to speak in tongues in order to fit in at the church and indicate that she was saved, which was considered evidence that the congregants were ready for the rapture to come. We're ready for the rapture to come to earth at any moment and send the spiritually deserving to heaven. She did this for eight years, which I just can't even imagine. Her one escape was singing in the church Church's children's choir, the Sunshine Band. Now people took notice of her excellent singing voice and began to compare her to sound of that of Anita Baker as she got older. And coming in at number one is John Travolta. After John Travolta has been a member of the Church of Scientology since 1975. Scientology has variously been defined as a cult, a business, or a new religious movement. Now John had a son named Jet, and on January 2nd, 2009, Jet died at age 16 while on a Christmas vacation in the Bahamas. A Bohemian death certificate was issued attributing the cause of death to a seizure. Jet, who had a history of seizures, reportedly suffered from Kowalski disease since the age of two. It's it's alleged that John withheld meds from Jet due to Scientology. In July 2019, Jet's passing made headlines again after Samantha Domingo, Placido Domingo's daughter-in-law and former Scientologist, shared some details about it. According to Samantha, one of the church's VIP members for 22 years, Travolta hopped into the ambulance transporting Jet's body to the hospital and tried to bring him back to life. In a desperate attempt to bring Jet back to life, Travolta supposedly did what Samantha described as a bring back to life assist, meaning that he he ordered Jet's spirit to return to his body. His attempt failed, and John's youngest son, Ben, was born almost two years after Jet passed away. And Samantha claims that the family believes Jet's spirit was in Ben. Coming in at number 10 is David and Patricia Arquette. David and Patricia Arquette have both spoken about being born into Skymont Subid. And now, if you've never heard of this group, don't worry, you're not alone. The group is alternately described as a cult or commune. The Subid movement was founded in the 1920s. 
1920s and is described as an international spiritual philosophy that emphasizes the awakening of one's inner self as part of the process of finding more fulfillment in life. Now, the Arquette kids were born into this group that their parents had started with their friends based on the Subid spiritual movement. Despite the peace oriented beliefs of the group, the Arquette children have shared that their own home was less than ideal. They started it with a bunch of their friends and they wanted to kind of build this utopian society, Patricia Arquette said on Oprah. She said the commune had no electricity or bathrooms, and I don't think there was running water. Number nine. Rose McGowan. Rose McGowan grew up in a cult that has had many names over the years. The Family International is a California based cult that has been known by two other names Children of God and its original name, Teens for Christ. Now, the organization is sometimes referred to as the Family of Love. Confusing, I know. Now, in the beginning, the organization encouraged its members to shun the outside world known as the system. The founder, David Berg, died in 1994 and his wife took over. Now, Rose's father, Daniel, was actually head of the cult's Italian chapter. Fortunately, her parents left the movement in 1978, and the rest of her childhood was spent living in various European cities. Rose has spoken about the experience extensively and has never had a positive word to say. In 2011, she told People, I remember watching how the cult's men were with women. The women were basically there to serve them. Rose also says the organization used children as a bargaining chip. The group encouraged you to have a lot of kids as fast as you could. Then if you made plans to leave, they would lean on you. You know, maybe your kids would disappear. Now, unfortunately, the organization continues today and remains based in Huntington Beach, California. Number eight. Glenn Close. Glenn Close revealed in 2014 that she spent nearly all of her childhood and teen years in a cult. Her father, William Telefero Close, was a doctor who joined the Moral Rearmament cult when she was only seven. Moral Rearmament was an international moral and spiritual movement that, in 1938, developed from American minister Frank Buckman's Oxford group. Frank headed MRA for 23 years until his death in 1961. In 2001, the movement was renamed initially of change. Glenn shared that the experience of being raised in the group had her questioning what was real about herself. I wouldn't trust any of my instincts because my beliefs had all been dictated to me. She added, you basically weren't allowed to do anything or you were made to feel guilty about any unnatural desire. If you talk to anybody who is in a group that basically dictates how you're supposed to live and what you're supposed to say and how you're supposed to feel from the time you're 7 till the time you're 22, it has a profound impact on you. Number 7. Andrew Keegan while many remember actor Andrew Keegan from the 10 Things I Hate About You film, he actually founded the spiritual community Full Circle in 2014. He claims his organization passionately seeks out to inspire and empower the community to co-create a better world. Vice characterized the organization as a new religion, while other outlets called it a cult. In 2015, Vulture described the group in this way. The actual theology of the group is tough to pin down, but it seems to loosely follow Hinduism or at least Russell Brand's Sanskrit tattoo version of it. Then, in May 2015, the Full Circle Temple was raided by California Department of Alcoholic Beverages Control officers. The raid was apparently related to Full Circle's distribution of kombucha, a fermented beverage made from sweet black tea. A spokesperson for the temple stated that they were unaware that they needed a license to distribute kombucha. Full Circle closed in 2017 because of financial difficulties, largely due to a sharp increase in property values in the area due to Google and Snapchat moving into the neighborhood. Number six, Michelle Pfeiffer. Wiley Brooks, the founder of a diet cult called Breatharianism, preached a daily intake of nothing but sand and dust. Yep, no eating or drinking water was allowed. It was sold as a way to keep skinny while expanding spiritual consciousness. It gained a large following in the 1980s, even in Hollywood. Wiley was famous for spreading the gospel that humans could live on air alone. He claimed he hadn't eaten in 19 years. To his followers, the binge was an unforgettable sin. Now, in 2013, Michelle Pfeiffer revealed that she spent part of her early career in this cult. She told Stella Magazine, They worked with weights and put people on diets. Their thing was vegetarianism. They were very controlling. I wasn't living with them, but I was there a lot, and they were always telling me I needed to come more. I had to pay for all the time I was there, so it was financially very draining. They believed that people in their highest state were breatharian. Now, something that I find hilarious is Lavelle Leffer, who was the co 
co-founder of the movement and Wilde's partner, revealed she caught him repeatedly breaking his own rules. In 1983, he was spotted carrying a Slurpee, hot dog, and Twinkies out of a 7-Eleven convenience store. Now, he was also spotted with trays of food delivered to his hotel room in Vancouver, including chicken pies and biscuits. Leffer said he made a habit of waiting until everyone was asleep before going on a snack run. Wow, what a hypocrite. Number 5. Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder is the first to admit she had an unusual childhood. Her parents were close friends with the poet Allen Ginsberg and author Timothy Leary, who was also Winona's godfather. When she was seven, the family moved to a commune in Northern California. The family joined seven others who all shared over 300 acres of land. This place is called the Rainbow Commune and it has been around since the early 1970s. This counterculture group was heavily inspired by the famous 1969 Woodstock Festival, as well as the anti-war pro-love movement. Movements. Though the Rainbow family both said it has no leader, there were two men largely credited for starting it. Barry Plunker and Garrick Beck were in their late 20s when they had a vision. Now, in the most serious incident at the commune, two women had their lives ended at a gathering in a national forest in West Virginia in 1980 after there had been brewing tension between the Rainbow family and the locals. Yep, that doesn't sound like a good place to grow up. Number four, Tom Cruise. Scientology is a set of beliefs and practices in invented by the American author L. Ron Hubbard and in an associated movement. Estimates put the number of Scientologists at under 40,000 worldwide. Now, as you might know, many celebrities are a part of this group like Tom Cruise. Kate Holmes and Tom Cruise began dating in 2005, and Kate began studying Scientology short after. In April 2006, they welcomed their first daughter, Suri, and the couple got married seven months later and would stay together for six years, but unfortunately, things ended badly in 2012. Despite staying pretty quiet during the divorce, Course, immediately people speculated that Tom's dedication to Scientology had a hand in it. When asked if Kate had requested a divorce in part to protect Surrey from the group, Tom said there's no need to protect my daughter from my religion. But he later admitted that it was in fact one of the reasons. Now it's since come out that Kate filed for divorce due to fear of Tom abducting their child into Scientology. Kate was granted full custody while Tom was afforded visitation rights, but honestly the thing that exposed Tom the most is the fact that he, all on his own, decided to choose Scientology over his daughter and literally has not spoken to her since the split. Apparently members are forbidden from associating with non-believers, so he cut ties, which is just sad. Number 3. Elvis Presley The Self-Realization Fellowship was founded in 1920 by Paramahasana Yogananda. This group looks good on the outside, but it appears to have major problems associated with members who have left and claim the organization operates like a cult. The contents of their materials are top secret, they use bizarre behavior and thought control tactics to control members and demand a godlike devotion to gurus to which a disciple must always be loyal throughout his lifetime and through future incarnations until he finds redemption. Now, Elvis Presley's ex-wife Priscilla once detailed Elvis's involvement in this very group. Sometime later, we were summoned to another retreat, the one that quartered Sierra de Mata, the woman who assumed leadership of the Self-Realization Fellowship after the passing of Yogananda. She was soft-spoken and natural, a person obviously at peace with herself. Elvis took to her immediately, thus began an ongoing dialogue between Elvis and C. De Armada that profoundly influenced his life. At the beginning of this spiritual enterprise, Elvis was wildly enthusiastic. Beyond talking of joining a monastery, he wanted to form a commune. He wanted to devote his life to helping others fulfill themselves through devotional discipline. In fact, he wanted to be a leader of the Self-Realization Fellowship. Number 2. Neil Bush Neil Bush, brother of George W. and Jeb, is reportedly part of the unification Unification movement or the Unification Church. Now, the Unification Church, known to normal people as the Moonies, was found in 1954 in South Korea by self proclaimed Messiah, Reverend Sung Myung Moon. Based on his teachings found in The Divine Principle, a book written by, you guessed it, Moon. Now, the South Korean cult came to attention of the world thanks to its mass wedding ceremonies where hundreds of strangers would meet and marry. The Unification Church has many strange beliefs and ties to politics, with the religious group known to be anti communist and big fans of Donald Trump. Neil Bush joined Moon on a year-long tour promoting the construction of a $400 billion tunnel that never came to fruition. After Sung Young Moon's death in 2012, Neil said, as controversial as Rev Moon was in the United States, I got to know him as a man whose heart was focused on bringing together people of different faiths to bridge divides. His call on people of faith to serve others is an important legacy. And coming in at number one is Allison Mack. The Nexium Corporation was a established by Randy Mack in 1989 
Rayner and Nancy Salzman in 1998 as a self-help organization where people could take part in seminars and learn how to make the most of their life. Nexium was also a way for Rayner and Nancy to brainwash folks into becoming members and investing money in the cult. It was then revealed by several newspaper exposés that Rayner was using the cult to create slaves. It all got rather messy when the police became involved in 2018 and Rayner and many of his followers were arrested after a bunch of crimes. Now one of the people arrested was Allison Mack. Her career came to a halt after she was accused of quite a few criminal acts in support of the group. Now part of her story is even portrayed in the Lifetime film Escaping the Nexium Cult, A Mother's Fight to Save Her Daughter. At number 10 is Bohemian Grove. You ever heard of the Bohemian Grove? It's Kind of like a super exclusive campsite for a bunch of really powerful dudes. We're talking top notch people like artists, musicians, big shots in business, former presidents, and even high ranking officials. They meet up every July for more than two weeks of occult shenanigans and political conspiracy. I'll get to the culty stuff in a minute, but first, I just wanted to point out how powerfully influential this society is, as some major world changing deals have gone down in this place. Get this back in 1942, they had a meeting that led to the making of the atomic heavyweights like Ernest Lawrence, Robert J. Oppenheimer, and heads of the Big Shot Universities first conceived the idea of the Manhattan Project right here. Now what makes this site even more interesting, besides all the political agendas, are the extremely culty rituals that go down here. For example, the Cremation of Care Ceremony is a theatrical production in which a bundle of sticks in a sack shaped as a person is burned and sacrificed in front of a giant owl statue known as Moloch the Owl God. I wish I were making this stuff up. The club's patron saint is Saint John of Nepomuk, who, according to legend, the club's patron saint is John of Nepomuk, who, according to legend, would have rather died at the hands of a bohemian monarch and did, rather than disclose the secrets of the queen. A large wood carving of St. John with his index finger over his lips stands at the shore of the lake in the grove, symbolizing the secrecy kept by the grove's attendees. At number 9 is Scientology. It's not just another self-help thing or a bunch of weirdos, no no no, this is a strange and dangerous money-making machine disguised as a religion. Essentially, they managed to brainwash members into making a lifetime commitment to Scientology by signing a billion year contract. Yeah, billion with a B. And in return for working an average of at least 100 hours a week, members earn two trillion dollars. Sounds neat, but that's spread out over your billion year commitment, amounting to, at maximum, $50 per week. Some members aren't even paid at all. They're all about hiding their sketchy stuff from the public eye. They even run their operations at sea or on reservations to dodge the law, so that even loyal high profile members don't know all the shady stuff that's going on. Well, lots of folks want to believe in something, right? And that makes them easy targets. And Scientology isn't just about money, it messes people up big time. They use mind games to make you loyal, basically giving all their members Stockholm Syndrome. It's messed up, but true. These groups mess with your head so much that you can't even see the truth anymore. They make you think everything is okay, but it's a trap. And getting out isn't easy. It's like being kidnapped mentally. And if you do manage to escape, you will be pursued by private investigators till the end of the earth. They silence anyone trying to escape or spill the beans. Even the cult leader's wife, Shelly Miscavige, has been, has been missing for almost two decades, which is seriously freaky. If you're enjoying this video so far, please support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Most Amazing, and ringing that notification bell. At number eight are the Freemasons. This ancient club has been around for centuries. Back in the day, these guys were a big deal, especially during the time when America was just getting started. Imagine that you're a builder working on big, fancy cathedrals in Europe during the Middle Ages. These builders had to move from place to place, and to recognize each other, they used special signs like the Builder Square and Compass, which ended up being an iconic symbol of Freemasonry. As a matter of fact, the very first third party in the United States, the anti masonic the Anti-Masonic Party, formed in 1828 in response to fears that the group was growing too secretive and powerful. Seems like those fears never went away. Now, the Freemasons aren't a religious group, but they do believe in a higher power. This belief caused some trouble with the Catholic Church way back when. See, the Church didn't trust them much and issued a bunch of warnings against them, which led to some drama, even sparking America's first third party. 
which I just mentioned. But the Freemasons aren't just some ancient history club. They're still around today doing a lot of charity work, or in other words, passing around money tax-free. And get this, lots of famous people were Freemasons. Folks like George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, and even Mozart and Winston Churchill. Now, the symbol that everybody talks about, the square and compass, is like the builder's tools, and some folks think the G in the middle stands for geometry or God, or the grand architect of the universe. At number seven is J.E.'s Little Black book. Now I have to be extremely careful about how I word this entry as YouTube's algorithm will definitely suppress this video if I go into too much detail, so I'm just gonna have to heavily censor myself. But I highly encourage you to Google this yourself after the video. In the tangled web of secrets and connections, Jeffrey's little black book emerged as a chilling glimpse into a world veiled from public view. This disturbing document, unearthed in a courtroom back in 2009, reads like a who's who of the global elite, meticulously chronicling the names, numbers, and addresses of the world's most powerful figures. Go through the document yourself, and I'm certain you'll recognize at least one name on every single page. There are 97 pages bursting with 1,571 names, plus 5,000 phone numbers, heaps of emails, and home addresses. Within these pages lies identities of celebrities, royals, esteemed scientists, and influential artists. The fact that this monster was so well connected really makes you think about the dealings that secretly go on with the Among those circled are notable figures like Prince Andrew, Ehud Barak, and Donald Trump, leaving questions hanging in the air inviting speculation about their involvement or ties to Jeffrey and his sinister operation. At number six is the Bilderberg Group. In 1954, there was this meeting that started it all, the Bilderberg Meeting. It happened in the Netherlands at a fancy hotel called the Hotel Bilderberg. Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands hosted it. It was a big deal and lots of powerful people from North America and Europe came together to talk. As they were worried about Europe not being too closely allied with America, so they wanted to become better allies. The guest list at these meetings is pretty impressive, including big shots like Bill Clinton, Margaret Thatcher, Angela Merkel, Tony Blair, Henry Kaczynski, the list goes on and on. But the thing is, what happens in these meetings stays a secret, as there are no journalists allowed inside and attendees can't spill the beans. It's all very hush-hush. Around 120 to 140 people get invited every year. Most are from Europe and North America, and they're usually into politics or government stuff. But sometimes, they also invite folks from academia and finance. These meetings aren't short of rumors. Some people think that the folks are secretly running the show behind major events like making the European Union, starting wars, or even planning a brand new world order. But the Bilderberg folks say that they're just there as individuals not representing anyone. A little bit sus. Recently, they had chatted about Brexit, cyber stuff, and climate change, but what really goes on inside these meetings is still a big mystery, but people have been talking about them for ages. At number five, we've got the Stewards, a group formed in 1903 by people at Georgetown University who were worried that the school was forgetting its Jesuit roots. They called themselves the Society of Stewards, but this was all hush-hush until 1988 when the student newspaper spilled the beans on them. Now here's the kicker. After the big reveal, they split into two groups. The original gang faded out in the 90s, but its spin-off, the Second Society of Stewards, is still hanging around today. But why all the fuss? Well, these groups are said to th throw their weight behind a right-wing agenda, using their cash and status to swing things their way. For example, Jack Applebaum was being pushed by the group to be the student body president until word got out that he was part of the secret society, which made his campaign nosedive. At number four is the Cadaver Society. Deep within Washington and the Lee University hides a secret society shrouded in mystery. Established back in 1957, this crew is as mysterious as it gets. Nobody knows for sure who the members are, but rumor has it they might be mostly pre med students. Now what's striking is their stealth, as they only convene after sunset, decked out in black capes and hoods, making identification kind of impossible. Nobody knows where they meet up, some whisper about underground tunnels camouflaging their movements, locked doors in the science building's basement, or even a tiny door in the Laborian library. Their symbol, a skull cradled in a sea, pops up all over campus, often after some cheeky pranks. Now before major games, their mark used to grace the football field. Now a turf field, it's shifted to the hilt nearby. At number three is the Illuminati. Way Shaps started it in 1776, not for cool handshakes and secret passwords, but as a big middle finger to the power of the Catholic Church and the Bavarian monarchy. He wanted reason to reign supreme, and so he cooked up this illumination thing. Now this dude was all about grabbing ideas from everywhere, the Enlightenment, Jesuits, even the Freemasons. Speaking of which, he poached heavily from them to recruit Europe's big shots. Think wealthy folks, influential dudes, noblemen, writers, you name it. The Illuminati also had levels and tiers within the ranks. There were the perfectibilists, 
And their communication was encrypted, of course. They had these cool nicknames, too. Wayshipitz was Spartacus, which kind of sounds like a superhero name, but the party didn't last long. Carl Theodore of Bavaria shut it down hard in 197, sorry, in 1787, saying, if you join the Illuminati, you're gonna face lethal punishment. Even though the group apparently got axed, rumors flew that they're still flying to this day. And they're behind everything from the French Revolution. And number two is the Skull and Bone Society. The super secretive group started back in 19, in 1832 at Yale University. The founders, William Huntington Russell and Alfonso Taft, made this made this club that's shrouded a mystery. Now what's wild is that some really big names are part of this crew. Every year, 15 seniors get picked to join the society. But here's the kicker, they gotta keep everything super hush. Their meetings are at a place called The Tomb, meeting twice a week and swearing to secrecy. Now there are some serious big shots who've been part of this crew. Presidents like Taft Bush, both senior and junior, John Kerry, and some big wigs from Fortune 500 companies and the CIA. Oh, and there's this symbol that they rock, a skull with crossbones, obviously, with the number 322 beneath it, which people might, which people say might be linked to when Alexander the Great kicked the bucket. And at number one is the Order of Gimgul. This mysterious society was based in, in the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. They've been around since way back in 1889, but their membership act and activities are shrouded in secrecy. Legend has it that their castle headquarters was built where a guy named Peter Dromgul met his end in 1833 after a duel over a girl. It said that there's this rock at the castle's entrance that's said to be stained with Dromgul's. Originally, they were called the Order of Dromgul, but they changed the name to Gimgul for a scarier vibe, I guess. They're all about chivalry and the whole King Arthur deal, but nobody really knows who's in it or how they're picked. Some wild accusations about them came up on a show called The Chris Gethard Show, claiming involvement in serious stuff, but none of these claims have ever been proven true. <laughs> 